What's going on, everybody? This is Blast the Speakers. i happy to welcome you all to the new show. Uh, uh, show, podcast, I don't know, the discussion. Let's leave it at that. We are Fight Talk. So what is Fight Talk? Fight Talk is uh, something that we've come up with so that we can all kind of come together, have a discussion, and um, pretty much talk about different topics that are of interest within our fighting game community. So every week we're going to try and have a discussion about different things with regards to fighting games. So we'll be moving forward with that. So tonight I'm joined in with the utility man, Shaft of Pleasure, or just Shaft. We'll leave it at that. Uh, and Rachan. So I'm looking forward to bringing out our guests. Um, I know we've got some people out there in, in the chat. Um, I'm going to hold off on highlighting comments and things like that unless really necessary. But towards the end of, of the show, I'd like to, you know, highlight certain things. We'll have a discussion. We'll open things up so that any Q&A that you guys may have, we can actually review them and so on and so forth. So let me start off with introducing the first guest well i am technically the first guest but the second person for that will be joining this fight talk tonight my good friend that i've known for a very long time for 20 plus years my good man the utility man what is going on how many times do we have to go over this you're not the first guest you're the host I am i'm the, the host. first guest i am the host i am the host with the most what can I say? <laughs> hey, everyone. How's it going? Excited to be here tonight, B, even though you're not a guest. No. I, I, you know, don't break my heart now. Don't break my heart. So how you doing? I'm not doing too badly. I just got done eating. Got me some fried chicken with some General Tso's. Really Ooh. good stuff. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. That sounds real good. That sounds real good. So, Hey, uh, guys. I'd you like, I, I, I'm sure you guys see the comments flying through. Uh, we've got people saying <laughs> it's Tom, you know, we've got people saying, Oh my God, it's Tom. Tom's in the flesh. He's a real person. This, I this, mean, this is a lot of people's first time seeing me. So it it's is. not that surprising, I guess. Console fanboy, what's going on, brother? See Marvel's yeah, out there. I see a lot of people out there. I don't want to, I don't spend too much time, but I just want to say hi to people. So a lot, a lot of people out there. What's going on, everybody? Um, so I did say that we weren't going to focus too much on that. I'd like to, I'd like for you to talk about yourself for a minute before we bring the other guests out. Um, this is your moment to to shine, if you will. So okay, you've no been. Way. We, I know you. Listen, I've known you for like twenty plus years. So, yeah. let me ask: since you've been in the fighting game scene and all that, how long have you actually been playing fighting games? Okay, so general background on that: uh, I started with Street Fighter Two back in '92, if I recall. Wow. Uh, I was just like a common player playing at a local pizzeria. I had no idea what I was doing. I was one of those people that's trying to read off the list of moves while I'm trying to play and, you know, getting destroyed by the computer. I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I had no idea what I was doing when I started. Like most people, I think I just entered the coin. I hit start. I picked the first character the cursor's on, which is Ryu, which you should be proud. I'm very proud of that. I think he's That's the most the appealing character. and the coolest character of all. I mean, I like Ryu, but I'm not giving him that much praise. I know uh, you love Blanca. We all know how much you no, love Blanca. Oh, I don't. That's really what it is. We so everybody that's that... watching, he's a Blanca no. fan, just so you know. No, we will save that for another podcast. I'm sure that will come up again. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Well, the, the whole point of tonight is actually how, a discussion with how to actually get into fighting games and what's an approach and what other people have been through. So seeing that Ryu was your first character, 
Uh, would you say that it was natural for you or would you say that you had to learn some things and uh, do me a favor and explain like what was that process of, of learning the movements and things like that? Well, that wasn't natural at all. Like um, I didn't know what any of the buttons did. I didn't even know that holding back was going to block like so, completely new to me. So you were a masher. No, not a masher per se. I was just one of those people that mostly relied on normals because I couldn't get the special moves to come out very often. Okay. I just kind of had to learn, okay, jump in, high kick, sweep the leg, jump away. Sweep the leg. Cobra Kai never dies. So, so, so your first character was Ryu? Yes, actually. And... Believe it or not, the whole time up until I met you, I didn't learn any other Street Fighter characters. I had no idea how to play any of the other ones. So you you stuck you stuck with Ryu all the way through. Stuck with Ryu all the way through. Never even played anyone else. Okay, okay. Well, I, I will continue this discussion, but I'd like to bring on our next guest, my good friend Shaft, Shaft of Pleasure. He's out there in the background. I'm going to bring him out. And here's my man, Shaft. What's going What's on? What's up, guys? Blast, thank you so much for having me on the show, man. Thank you for, thank you for joining us tonight. It's, it's a pleasure. So uh, I'm going to ask the same question. I mean, what was your first thing with fighting game scenes? And please tell us about yourself. I mean, uh, I know who you are, and I know who you are in the fight game community. And I know how, you know, what your skill level is at with regards to the big blue and and you know how you play Street Fighter and whatnot. Come on, like, who can forget that Dalzine, bro? But, <laughs> but I don't think everyone else does. And I think I'd like for you, for you just to talk about yourself, explain your background, where you started, how you got into things, and what was your approach to getting into fighting games? Yeah, man. So I grew up playing Street Fighter II, uh, World Warrior at first, but once Hyper Fighting came out, that was my jam ever since. I even stuck with hyper fighting even after Super Turbo came out. And that was my game for a long time. I, I played some other fighters too, but I grew up with uh, my babysitter since I was like six years old. He, he was the arcade tech at the local golf land where I grew up. I, I grew up in the Bay Area. So lots of street fighter players out there. And so I just kind of grew up around him and all of his buddies playing street fighter. I got free tokens at the arcade, you know? Um, oh, yeah because he's cleaning out the machines and just scooping quarters from the back of them, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how it all started. So first character, what was your, you know, who did you pick? What did you, what would, what did you, what was your first character? Who did you play as? Ken. Ooh. Ken was my first character. I always thought he was better than Ryu because his dragon punch went further. And so I would just, you know, throw fireballs, and when someone jump, jumped over, you just dragon punch, and it covers the whole screen. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the flame. It's it's the fire that they attracted you. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, and I, I, you know, I, I never the online scene started happening. You know, not not too long after after that, but I, I didn't ever play online at first because um, I, I had such a cool local scene with all my buddies. And so we were always just playing the on the console in my living room and, um, you know, did that until my mid 20s when I finally left the Bay Area. Finally, when I left, I didn't have all my friends anymore, so I had no choice but to go online. So that's when I started playing on Fightcade, got into Super Turbo um, and then now playing Big Blue. Here we are. OK, I, I that's a good background. That's. So I'm going to like I like to continue that. I'd like to bring out our next guest. I'd like to bring out my, my good friend Rachan as well. Uh, let's go ahead and bring him out so that this way he can give his introduction and then we can go ahead and, and, and continue the discussion with regards to things. So uh Rajan, what's going on, my man? Hey yo, everybody hear me all right? Yeah, I hear you fine. Sweet. Good deal. Good deal. How's everybody doing? Thank you, Blast, for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, just like I've been going around the room pretty much asking the same question, I'd like to know uh, your origins, if you will. What got you into fighting games and where did you take off from there? 
let's see. So uh, going back to the 90s, uh, or no, uh, 80s, like late 80s, uh, back in Hawaii, uh, we had the Street the Street Fighter 1 machine with the big buttons, with the big punch, the big Ooh, kick. And so, mind you, I'm about eight years old, seven years old at the time, trying to push this thing down. Yep. Uh, my brothers were very, uh, were very big fans of the game. And so when 2 came out in 90, I started playing with them, Super Nintendo, uh, couldn't really pull. I was The only thing I was trying to do is pull combos. So fierce, 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 right? So fierce, jumping fierce, down fierce, fireball. Right. Um, and from there, you know, my drive in life was to try to beat my brothers. And I never could until about maybe I was 13, 14 from there. And then they kind of tapered off. And then I started progressing even further. Um, and then so uh, a couple of games came out in between. Uh, so I'm not Street Fighter agnostic. I can always, I can go anywhere. So uh, I was a really good, uh, I was not really good, but I was. Um, Mortal Kombat? Kind of Mortal Kombat, mostly Tekken. So uh, Tekken we got, we got people ask, asking about that. Like, yeah, he got at Mortal Kombat console fanboy was asking. Yeah, so um, Mortal Kombat was good and it was popular in San Diego at the time. Uh, Tekken was really big. Uh, shout outs to the you know to the SD Tekken team, all those guys. Uh, you know we've played nonstop. Tekken three was my jam for the longest. I wasn't playing Street Fighter until about Street Fighter Collection on PS one. That's yeah. when I started playing Super Turbo, and then um, from there it just kind of just progressed and then took a break came back to it back at evo uh when evo used to be in regions so it used to be evil west evil east evil north evil south and then evo in, in vegas and i did evo west as my first big tournament and fell in love with the competitive scene ever, ever since so i mean it's just been constant from there so i, I just want to since you said you you've been to tournaments and things like that uh, that's beautiful see that right there is someone who goes at different levels and has different experiences and i can't wait to to deep dive more into that and hear how you transitioned and grew from you know just just playing these things just having fun at the local arcade and then you're going to an actual tournament and you're competing mm -hmm. so you know that's that's huge man so I, yeah. I, I would like to hear more about that uh moving forward um i i will just say that coming back to utility man what he was saying earlier with his first comings with what his first fighting game was was street fighter 2 the same with myself and the funny thing ironically was also at a pizzeria it was at a local pizzeria and i have friends that will argue with me and say no it was a video store and all that's true we played it at a video store that was by the house but the very first initial time that my father actually took me for some pizza and whatnot there was the street fighter 2 uh world warrior arcade and I remember like vaguely what that was like. And I just saw people playing it and I was so infatuated. I was like, wow, like I must have been 11 or 12 at the time. So for me, that was just like the biggest thing. And then I just started playing. I mean, granted, I'll be, I'm will be i going to be honest. I was just obviously mashing at that point. But it was like trying to get some moves out. And the reason why I was mashing was because I remember one of the characters I picked was Honda. He was not the first character. I don't remember if it was Ryu. I don't remember who it was, I'm being honest. But I remember that it was Honda and Blanca and other characters where I realized that, that if I just mash buttons, I could get certain things out. Like with Honda, you get the hand slap. With Blanca, mm -hmm. you get the electricity. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was like my approach. That was like the very first thing that I learned. And then, you know, I watched players who were better at the game and i saw people like using ryu using ken and i was like wow i really like those characters but then when they explained how to actually do like a fireball motion and all these things it was very hard and difficult to do that in the arcade as an 11 year old 12 year old kid so for me i was <laughs> stuck to just mashing buttons and i was stuck to like oh yeah i got the hand slap i'm good i'm happy so that was how I my that's how I got into it. And then later on, I started picking Honda. I started picking Blanca because I realized that I could just charge, go back, go forward, press punch button. They'll 
perform different moves. And then I went to Guile and I was playing Guile for a very long time until I finally did learn how to play as Ryu, Ken, and so on and so forth in just Street Fighter 2 talks. Um, and then when we talk about other games, Mortal Kombat, so on and so forth, was a little easier at that point because Street Fighter 2 was my first game. So like Liu Kang, for example, if you want to do his fireball, it's just forward, forward, punch. So it was a little easier for me to perform that but it was once I actually knew what I was doing, you know? So, I mean, Utility Man, tell me, like, you, your first character was Ryu. What was, <laughs> I could only, you know, you were just doing the high lows. You know, you were sweeping them. You were doing Cobra Kai style. But talk to me about, like, how did you get over that whole learning the fireball and all of that, like, all of the, the, the three basic movements, you know, or, or spe special moves, rather? I feel like I can't pass up the fact that Ryu wasn't your first love. He, I, I have to. He probably was the most interesting character for me because I had, growing up, I had posters, I had all kinds of things that were Street Fighter related, and he was always front and center of those posters. So for me, he he quickly became my favorite, and to this day, he still is. You got a guy that slaps you with a hundred hands, a guy that's an electric ball, a guy that stretches across the screen. And you think Ryu is the most interesting one. You make it sound like Blanca's interesting. No. Take notes, guys. Saying. Take notes. From, okay. From uh, the perspective of somebody that doesn't know these games, they're going to look at Ryu and be like, oh, the okay. karate guy. Okay. What's yes. interesting about him? Well, I felt... I only picked him because he was where the cursor started. To be fair, he threw fireballs. It's pretty dope. Like, Blanca couldn't throw a fireball. Honda can't okay. throw a fireball. So okay. when you when you're going back and forth, you know, who can throw out a projectile? That's pretty enticing to me because I don't have to move to throw something to to attack you. That's something that's pretty that that's you know kind of enticing, not enticing, but interesting to say the least. Plus okay, it's relatable. That's if you know that's a fireball. It's blue. How do you know it's a fireball? Okay. That's what we called it. I mean, well, technically, technically, red fireball. Te technically red there was fireball. there was fireball, but then you know, it was a fire. You know that was what it's called. Just like how a a, a a sonic kick or a flash kick was called a blade kick in San Diego, right? Oh, yeah, we did. Who that. who you know? Okay. Or or a jackknife, or yep. I don't know. Like Perfect oh, Guile's putting a a knife in his boot so that way he has that blade. Who knows, right? So I mean, it's one of those things where. You know, you see these guys throwing fire out of their hands going out. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Like, you know, I want to know how to do that. But again, for me personally, when I, and the other thing too, Street Fighter 1, it was crossfire. That was the first, that was the first ever fireball. And it was an actual fireball that went through. And two, it was a blue fireball with their hands going like this. Yep. So I remember yeah. Street Fighter 1. That was Did more difficult to get out. Then? Say again? Go ahead. Tom. Did you get caught up in it? Did I get caught up in in one? Crossfire. Yes, I did get up in crossfire. You had enough crossfire. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. okay. It's pretty obvious. I came from a very different background than everyone else. I had no friends that played fighting games. No. I knew <laughs> nobody that played fighting games. Okay. I was always a solo act. Uh, my arcades were not very populated. There was rarely anyone on fighting games. I had to be self-taught for the most part, which is why when I met Blast in 2001, if I recall, I was still running around mashing high punch. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And where where, where is this at, though, Utility Man? I, I'm curious. I don't. He's he's talking about Kyler days. No, yes. what I'm saying is 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 like so. You know, like you, you said that your arcades were not populated or anything oh, like that. Where okay. where in the world? Uh, I lived at the time in Southeast Florida. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, I mean, we had an arcade, and it was a pretty good size arcade, but rarely anyone on fighting games. Okay. So uh, for me, learning was difficult. We didn't have the internet then. I didn't have anyone to ask about strategies or tips or whatnot. Sure. So I stayed a casual until I met Blast. Gotcha. So a casual... You still knew how to perform the movements and things like that, right? I did, but I still couldn't get them to come out every time. Like, I was still struggling. 
Okay. Like, so for me, that's why I relied so heavily on normals. So okay. when they started making the Marvel series with uh, Children of the Atom, I picked Wolverine. He doesn't sure. have a fireball. He doesn't have fancy motion. I can just <laughs> jump all over the place, high punch, and win because he's broken. It works. <laughs> I didn't know he was whatever, broken. Whatever works. Whatever <laughs> works. Like I agree. I had no idea at that time how to assess who was better than who. I just knew that I could berserker barrage all over the place and win. So I thought that's what I'm supposed to do. So okay. when I met Blast, the first thing I got to play him in was Marvel versus Capcom. I picked Ryu and Wolverine, and I was terrible. Though in my defense, I was playing online on a 56k modem. It was. So okay. Not everything so was really coming out well. At that day, we had DSL was the big thing, if I mm-hmm. recall correctly. Mm-hmm. But yes, 56k was like just under that. Yeah. So yeah. if ever there were a noob at fighting games, I was the poster child for it. I didn't know pro players. I had no idea what Evo was or anything like that. And he, he did learn. And like, he, I do he, have to give Blast a lot of credit. He's the reason I got good at these. Gonna make me blush. Your initial instructions were not that great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The first thing he wants me to up. practice is an air combo. Just launch the character and then do this motion and you'll get a combo out. Lo and behold, I chose Jin for this. Oh, it's terrible. Worst Worst. air combos. So when I come back to him and be like, it's not working. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Well, what character are you trying it with? Jin? Doesn't let me know. You didn't warn me ahead of time. I had to explain it to him afterwards. But the truth is, I'm happy you wrote up the Versus series. The Versus series is kind of a lot of people are intimidated by it. I know um, half of half of uh, the guys you see here are more Street Fighter based, but Utility Man and myself are more on the Marvel games. And the truth is, with the Marvel games, it's about combos. Now, the the introduction of combos, in my opinion, came with Super Turbo because that was when the they actually acknowledged if you will the combos now we know that the combos started street fighter 2 somewhere around there and it was because of the stun if you will when your opponent is stunned and the ability for them uh for you to continue a movement and have another you know a combination of movements if you will i'm sorry struggling to find the right words but that's really what a combo is it's just a combination of movements now you were you, in Street Fighter, you really want to go for like a keeping your opponent stunned and then figuring out what other movements and what combos will work with that. And, you know, Rachan and Shaft, they will be able to explain more about this. But with regards to Versus series, it's a little easier for combos because that's what the game was made for. It completely opens up. Like MVC, for example. There are things like even X Men versus Street Fighter, Marvel versus Street Fighter, Marvel versus Capcom, Marvel versus Capcom Two. There are things like the Magic series. There are other things that we can discuss that pretty much allows you to do these combinations. So, like the Magic series is like you're doing low punch, low kick, medium punch, medium kick, and that right there is like you can refer to it as the Magic series, or you can refer to it as a zigzag because you're going zigzag on the buttons. But you also have, you know, you're ending it with a high punch. You're ending it with a high kick. So you're doing an air combo, for example. You're lifting the the opponent up in the air, and that's what you're doing. So that works on the ground, and that works in the air in the Marvel series. So just combo-wise, just talking about combos, it's a little easier. With Street Fighter, it's not as easier but I'm not trying to say that or discourage people from doing combos in Street Fighter because, in fact, that's what we want to do and that's what we aim to do. It's just figuring out what works. Now, usually you want to do something where you're going from low, medium to high, and that's what we also refer to as the Magic Series. So I just wanted to bring that out. I mean, 
I like to, to dive more deeper into these type of things because that's really what the whole topic is, is the approach of how do you get into fighting games, you know? So, like, in my, my opinion, you use what works first and then you fine-tune whatever that you, you're mastering your craft, like, with all things in life. So you're, pick, you're picking a character, you're selecting that character, and you're working with that character. So, like, for me, Honda, Blanco were my first. So I started with them. I was like, okay, I got the electricity down with Blanca. Well, how do I do the, the ball motion? How do I get the ball every time? I would have to hold back two seconds, press forward, press punch button, so on and so forth. And the same thing with, with E. Honda with, with his dive move. So that's how I approached it. So utility man, your approach, you were with Ryu. I, I can only imagine the struggle. Like you said, you were you were you were struggling getting moves out until you met other people that you knew who were into fighting games, and then you started to perfect your craft, right? I learned by getting beat again and again and again and again. And maybe that doesn't work for everyone, but I always feel like the best way to learn is to just get in and play. Like, I you think you can watch videos, you can look up guides, but I think having the controller or arcade stick in your hand and just doing it for yourself is what I you think, need to do. I think you were the poster child for the term losing equal learning. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, I was on 56K modem, so everybody else's attacks coming out two seconds before mine it wasn't exactly easy. Yes. So uh, you, I'd like to actually highlight something that Blood Tide posted he said the difference between street fighter and the marvel style games street fighter uses links marvel uses chains there's a big difference so he's absolutely correct so chains is like it's faster so when you're pressing different buttons like i said with the zigzag with marvel that's a lot easier whereas with uh street fighter like he said you're using um links so like what links into what so you have to figure out all right you know, you're going to jump in, let's say, with something basic with Ryu. You're going to jump in with a, a high punch. Then you're going to crouch with a medium kick. And then you're going to do a fireball. You know, that's a three-hit combo that links in Street Fighter as an example, you know. So, yeah, I, I, Shaft, please. Go, I, I, go I think it's important to, to just specify that when we're talking about combos, we're talking about unblockable chains, right? So if you get hit by the first attack, you can't block the second or third or fourth attack. And however long that combo is, that's what a true combo is. And in Street Fighter, you can do some, some chain combos without animation canceling your normal attacks or doing CPS one combos. In fact, with my crew growing up, we didn't even know about any of that stuff, you know, pre-internet. And even when the internet was new, we weren't looking any of that stuff up. We were all kind of self-taught like you, utility man, except we all shared each other's knowledge, right? So we got to grow a little bit as a, our small local community, but it wasn't until I, I left and started looking online that I discovered, oh man, all this stuff we thought, like we just thought it was a glitch when we saw a, a standing fierce get canceled into a dragon punch. You know, we're, we just didn't, we couldn't understand it. Um, so I, I think that's a good segue into one of my big tips on getting into fighting games is getting involved with the online community, join the Facebook group, join the discord channels and get to know people, get involved. You'll, you'll learn a lot faster. You'll get better. You'll make friends, makes the yeah. whole experience more enjoyable. Yeah. Socializing is key. Uh, yeah. If people share information. There are people out there that, that will actually help and will guide you through things. So with I, that being said, it's one of those things. So me, when I was starting off, uh, our arcade scene and chef, maybe because you were in California at the time, maybe I think, but during that time frame, I was very fortunate to live in the era of arcades to transition to online. So I was able to go to the arcade, share, or in a lot of cases, not share information. That's old school mentality where it's like, I don't want you to know how I do that at all i don't want you to know how i link you know uh two shorts into a fierce into a fireball i don't want you to know that because that's that's learning my tech nah -uh. 
You know, I want to be the best. And thankfully in San Diego, there were at least four or five populated arcades along with the pros that came from LA to come down or Westminster, like Alex Valle or, you know, or John Choi up in, you know, in NorCal. But I mean, realistically though, the, the online community, what Chef said is so crucial now because everybody's willing to share the information. Whereas growing up back then, me and my brothers were the only ones that knew like, okay, this is how this works. Okay, this is how this works. Let's test this out and see if this works. We used all of that tech and then we showcased it in Vegas. That was our big deal. Like we would get, go to Vegas every once, you know, every couple months with my my parents, you know, because they like they like That's gambling. Awesome. So it was like we would go over there and be like, okay, let's showcase that. Because all these other families that came from Vegas back then it was like all about family at the time they would all send their kids to the arcade and then we would all just throw it down and there's like lines of street fighter machines lines of mortal Kombat machines lines of marvel versus capcom machines whatever machine was hot at the time and so you know uh the way to get into fighting games now is definitely different than how I, how it was back then but again to highlight that that uh that tip getting involved in your community is the one if you really want to get in if you really want to be good or learn and yes game <laughs> our, facts. Our, you know, right yeah like, printed game, game facts, facts were so, yeah, hot back then man. yeah you know like that's how i learned all of king's uh king's chain combos in tekken 3. so it's like you have to learn all this stuff and even in high school thankfully in high school we had a crew that you know i was again i thought i was hot shit like I thought it was the stuff and I got humbled really bad. And I learned that's another life lesson I learned that day, which was no matter how much, you know, crap you talk, back it up. Otherwise stay quiet because there's no reason for you to do that. Otherwise you'll just get humbled. You know, yeah. it's just, it, it happens that way. But anyway, so yeah, I, I think that, you know, getting involved is a real key and there's a lot of good people out there that will help you evolve your game if you if you want it that's dedication that's where you that's the other um uh factor of how to you know how to get better at fighting games or how to get into fighting games is if you have dedication you know you're you're, yeah. you're on your way i agree that's what i was saying earlier i was like you have to perfect your craft you have to practice so you mm -hmm. have to like make give yourself like exercises so like the, the one thing, like, even Shaft and I, we had this talk before and, and the, the backtrack just a little bit. Like, we feel bad. Like, a lot of guys out there buy the arcade. So, like, they went out, they bought a Big Blue, a Shinko Hadouken, a Yoga Flame, for example, on Arcade 1-Up. Or even if you're on Fight Kid and you just want to get into, let's say, Street Fighter or you want to get into Mortal Kombat or any other game or or Marvel. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is that you you pick something, you stick with it. And you practice with that because a lot of people like you go on if i start typing fighting games are on google people are like fighting games are hard i'm like really like it shouldn't be hard it should be fun but a lot of people they just want to get into it they don't want to spend the time like perfecting something so the truth is is that if you actually make it fun for yourself that's how you start to grow so like okay so like for example utility man he picked ryu as a start for his starting character so i can imagine that struggle but i'm pretty sure he did fun exercises and things like this and i may have suggested this to him back in the day where i said well if you're playing locally or whatever just have a dummy and if you're practicing your fireball motion you know your quarter circle forward punch so that you can get the hadouken out just play the 99 seconds see how many fireballs you can get out start counting them make a record beat that record so on and so forth so there's like yeah. little games that you can make little things you can do for your own self to make it fun so that you are enjoying the game so that you start to learn okay and then once that can become like second nature for you you move on to the next thing all right want to learn how to do a sure you can how many times can i do a sure you can you know these are things that you want to start to do and the same thing with combos, with chains, all that stuff is like you practice these things. What do you think these top players do? They're in that lab. They're in that training room. Like even my own self, like when I did all those combo videos with CS Vagrant back in the day, that's what we did. We were just labbing. We were just in the lab, in the training room, practicing stuff. And then we were like, oh, wow, okay, this is cool. Granted, I had the recording device on, but you, you get what I'm saying yeah so i think i think it's you know with with exercises like that 
again, it, 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 that's repetition, right? Or that's, exactly. you know, repetition, yeah. you know, muscle memory, all that stuff. I think one of the, one of the things, and I, I believe utility man will probably vouch for this is that it's really difficult to um, have dedication. If you don't have anybody to play with. Yes. Shaft, certainly- you had your, you had your small circle. I had my brothers, you know, and when you have that, you know, that tight knit, you know, and, you know, person to person that really helps out. I think that now with the newer games, like whether it be street fighter five or Tekken seven, or Tekken eight or whatever, Tekken 7, whatever um, you know, online is definitely key. Right. But I think you need to have like other people with you, whether it be online or in person to help you or yeah. to help each other to have more interest because I know for me, if I play a new fighting game, like I want to have somebody to play it with. And if I don't have anybody to play it with, whether it be my nephew now or my brothers, then it's like, I lose interest really fast. And I'm just like, I'm done. You know, yeah. um, so I, I just got the Marvel vs. Capcom two cabinet. Part of mm-hmm. the reason I did is because I knew guys like Tonka who, who are, you know, who they were on there. And I was like, Okay, so you know, J dot C dot. I, I already have some friends I can go and play with if I get this cab. So right. I'm I totally suck at it. Right. Um, but know. I have friends that I can, you know, ask questions and they, they can teach because you know, I'm in there with Ryu. I'm like, okay, I got some Street Fighter characters. I'm pretty good at Street Fighter, so I should be yeah. able to, to slap these guys around, right? No, I no. get destroyed. And and so it's like, oh, okay, there's all these new mechanics that I have mm-hmm. to learn, how to switch out characters, how to you know what's well, the synergy and all yeah. other stuff. You know, so and I, getting into new fighting games specifically, yeah, focus on learning the new mechanics first. Like, sure, how to change out your characters. Yeah, how to use the power gems in the um, uh, which game is that? Superheroes. Yeah, that's how yeah. new I am at this cat. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but it, it, it's it, that's you're, another you're right. Too, right? Yeah, there's a lot of different mechanics that you have to learn, and all these things. And it's like unless you have somebody to actually talk to about it i think it's very difficult you can only read the internet or watch a video so many times before it just gets boring or it gets an interesting you're just like forget it like i don't really want to i don't really want to pursue this because you know the barrier of entry which brings back to your point blast which is you know fighting games are hard yes they're hard in the sense of if you if you think that the barrier of entry is that high you can say the same thing for fps games like for like you know modern warfare anything like that you got to learn maps you got to learn how to you know the jump back and forth you got to learn how to quick turn you know it's all these different nuances right so it's really you know it's really a matter of again comes back to dedication community you know, and being able to have the resources to you know, to learn your craft and perfect it. You know, but that's, but that's what I was trying to also say is because there are tools that they they have. Like even Fightcade, you can get training mode, you can get other things. Right. I don't disagree at all with regards to you know speaking with with people in the community and making friends and all of that. In fact, I encourage that. I think though personally, if you want to master your character if you want to master something in the game you're going to have to practice you're going to have to have that repetition you're going to have to in that training room absolutely perfecting your craft you know like whether or not you're you're just sitting there and throwing fireballs i mean yeah that can get super boring fast but if you make it fun for yourself because i'll be honest like the struggle was real there were so many combos and things like that that i used to do back in the day and i would spend hours on end just trying to get a 15 second clip done you mm-hmm. know because i was like wait no i want to do this so that i can show that what's possible in the game that was mm-hmm. something that i strived for right so it, it it depends on what the person's approach most people they just want to play the game just have fun or they want to be like all right well i'm good at this i can beat people and that was another thing we talked about um the other day um that i really liked was like you got people coming in thinking that they were like the king of the hill yep and that they knew how to play street fighter and they knew how to play all these fighting games and stuff and then it's like they'll join a community they'll go to a tournament or they'll go online and Mm -hmm. they'll start playing people and they'll get discouraged they They really shouldn't i mean it's it's it happens often a lot of people just you know and it's sad if it's like if you spend 500 dollars or whatever on one of these arcade cabinets and it's it's like oh yeah you bought big blue you bought shinku whatever and you're playing this, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, you know what? I 
I don't want to play this no more. I don't, I'm not that good at it. Yeah. I, I, have, I have an example of something like that I saw. It was a Reddit post of someone complaining about Street Fighter 2. It sounded like they played HDR champ or something. They were just like, <laughs> That's Zangief, bro. That's yeah, Zangief. <laughs> and they're just like complaining, like, I can't do anything. Like, this, this is not an interactive game right now. I can't do anything. This is so unfun. And right. so he was like, this is so stupid. I don't, why did I buy this cap? And I was like, right. I was like, dude, if, if you were to just ask HDR champ, he's a really chill guy. He'll help you out. He'll be like, Hey, this is what yep. you need to do when I have you in this trap. Here's mm -hmm. when you have an opportunity to DP, you know, and he'll help you out. Most of the community, like if you just played him online, mm -hmm. it would feel like he's a mean guy because he's yeah. whooping your butt ruthlessly. You know, uh, he's not going to take it easy on you just because you're low rank or whatever. Right. Try harder so he doesn't lose his XP, but yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah. a lot of people have the issue where they're not observing what's going on in the match. All they remember is whether they won or lost. And that's a very important aspect of the fighting games is when something works, you need to remember that. Think about why that works. Yeah. Think about doing that again and seeing if it works again. Because the main aspect of it is fighting games are a chess game. Yep. It is all about outthinking your opponent. Yeah. Like, strip away all the special moves, all the combos and whatnot. You can win with just normals if you just know how to outthink your opponent. Yep. This is true. Absolutely. 100%. Um, you know, it's, again, barrier of entry. You know, you know, all... Everybody in the in the comment section is making really good points, and it's just they are. when you're getting it when you're getting into it, you know. I think a lot of it is don't be discouraged, you know. Uh, I think that's that's one. And Chef, you know, with that Reddit post, you know, it, it, I, I think the problem with that is not a lot of people have the resources or think about like, oh, there's a Discord for me to join. Oh, there's a Facebook group. Granted, Facebook is probably the most uh accessible to us old timers here <laughs> and so and uh and, and unfortunate truth right but it's uh at least it's a resource to be there now again this comes back to do you have the will to be you know to become better i know when i got when i started playing my big blue months after i bought it and months after i moved into my house I was like, you know what? My goal is to get top 10. I told Chef, I told Naksu Cal, I told all those guys, I'm like, look, my goal is to get caught top kit, top 10. Not number one, top 10. Sure enough, ask me Chef, ask HDR, all these guys like, okay, look, how do I beat this? How do I get this done? Why is my, why is why is Blanca jumping up? How come I can't uppercut him? How come I can't, you know, why is it when I tick throw or when you do a tick SPD in the corner? I can't get out versus when I'm, you know, when we're in, uh, when we're in neutral outside the corner, all these things. Now, granted, that's me, that's my mentality, but other people, if you have that mentality, that's wonderful. If you don't, maybe fighting games aren't for you, or maybe just, you're just more of a casual, but it's really all about your fire to, to be better at it, you know? So. But I'm, ha I'm happy you brought that up because that's what this show is about. What I, what my vision for this was, was to bring up topics such as this so that people that don't know, like, for example, what a tick throw is, they'll they'll be able to learn from these discussions. They'll be able to we can even provide demonstrations later on, things like that, so that people will grow. Mm. People will learn. So while we we can reach people and interact with them in the community and stuff, we will also try and do this show and other things with with Fighters Evolution to try and bring that out so that you guys who are watching or tuning in you can have that or you can reference back and be like oh okay this is what he meant this is what that meant mm -hmm. so we want to do that but this first initial show was just us to have a discussion just so that we can talk about this and figure out all right how are we going to approach this and give a general idea for people that are starting out or who have been playing but they want to get better like what are different things that they can do and um there are other things i'd like to highlight a comment um that somebody brought out earlier. Give me one second. It's like, how do you jump in? No, that wasn't, but it was, I believe it was Amar. He said uh, something along the lines of like, how do you jump in between different fighting games? It's like, well, how do you go like Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat to Tekken? And, yeah. how, you know, how do you adjust 
to these different games? Like, I, I, I'll give my opinion on it, but I'd like for you guys to, to, to tell me what your – how do you go from one game to another? Like, Shaft, I know you're, you, you just picked up Marvel, and you want to learn how to get into Marvel, but are there any other fighting games that you yourself have played that you've pretty much have – I wouldn't say mastered, but feel comfortable with, let's say, other than Street Fighter? Yeah, Soul Calibur 2, um, Dead or Alive. Um, yeah, I remember you I, talking I, about Dead or Alive. We had that yeah, talk. I, I yeah. played a little Mortal Kombat. Like, I, I've dabbled in, in a lot, um, not on a super high level, but to the point where I knew all the mechanics. Uh, super Smash Bros., another one I played a lot. That's not a fighting game, by the way, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a fighting game. That's it not totally a fighting counts. game. That's no, it doesn't count. So yeah. that's see, that's everybody's opinion on it. But let's be real; it is a fighting game. They even came out with no. uh, multi. I'm sorry, that, that's not a that's not a fight. It's a that's a that's a platform. That's a platform. Uh, it's uh, a brawler. Brawler. It, thank you, thank yes. you, Zoe. Thank you. You can say, you can say that. No, but no yeah. items. Final destination. Right. <laughs> the only stage you can use. <laughs> Could probably have a show just on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so going back to labbing, that's one of the primary things I've I've been focusing on with because I'm I'm totally new at Marvel versus Capcom, right? So I can pick up a guy like Ryu and I know all the basics already, fireball uppercut, right? And so then I just offline beating up a dummy on two player with nobody there. I'm just practicing the new mechanics, you know, practicing my super over and over and over and until I can do something like three times in a row versus a dummy, like you're not going to be able to do it three times versus a real player who actually knows how to kill you. Mm -hmm. So I practice offline a ton. Anytime I learn a new character or I'm trying to learn a new combo or a new um, yeah. mechanic, I, I do it offline. Yeah. That's the way that's that that's what I, what I was saying earlier with like just throwing fireballs, let's say, against a dummy, just so you can count how many times you can actually perform a movement if you're starting out, for example. You know, it's just you're picking something and you're perfecting that craft. You're 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 making sure that you can do this regularly, you're comfortable with it. So like since you're picking Ryu, I'm not sure if you know this, but you could do something simple as a low kick into a high punch or a low punch into a high punch or or anything from a, a low attack to a high attack. So, like, you could do low punch to high kick. You could do low kick into high punch. You can mix it up a little. But I prefer ending it off with a high punch, and I can explain that later on for with Ryu, for example. But I would do, like, low kick, high punch into super fireball, into the hyper fireball. That links, just so you know. I don't know if you knew this or not. That, that, that's versus, right? That's the versus series. Okay. Because yeah. right. yeah. he's talking about like Marvel. I'm, I'm specifically talking about Marvel versus Capcom, but this will work in Marvel versus Street Fighter. This will work in X Men versus Street Fighter. It applies to all of the versus series in that. And this is in this is in neutral. I'm assuming. Yes, this okay. is when you're in, in, neutral, yeah, in neutral. You're standing. Yeah. Thank you, Rod. I appreciate that because yeah. you are standing. You're not, you know. Right, you're not jumping. You're not in the air, right? Because exactly. I mean, obviously, if you're doing a, you know, low, you know, short, short, yep. you know, high punch, you're knocking them down on the floor. So it's like oh, yeah. if you're doing yep. things. So, you know, it's so it, it, yeah. it, you have to take the time out. That's the problem. I think that most people, like, I think that's what it is that turns people off. They they're not willing to invest that time. Mm -hmm. That it takes to actually learn these movements and learn these things but at the same time it's not like somebody actually goes there and explains it to them and says okay hey you know what this is how you do this this is how you do that which comes back to the whole community and interacting with everybody and you know that's that's what it is i mean tom you even know remember x team back in the day that was we were all helping one another that's really what it was and yeah. i think putting in the time is certainly important but one thing you have to keep in mind if you were too focused on who is winning and who is losing you will not improve oh no mm -mm. that is the only thing on your mind you were only limited in yourself sure and it's sad some people come in with that mentality they really do you have to actually come in and be like you know what it's like you got to come in and be like you have to expect to lose you're right you can't you have to be humble about it you can't just come in and be like well i'm the best and nobody's gonna beat me and all this stuff you know and i think that's a hard thing for a lot of people who play fight games because we're all so competitive right oh yeah there's not you know um what's that one farm game that people play right like super competitive people Which don't one? play 
the, oh, the like a billion like, like, like Animal Crossing, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Harvest Moon. Harvest the Moon. Competitive gamers are playing like Terraria? first person shooters yeah. or or yeah. like, Minecraft, um, you know, <laughs> or fighting fighting games. You know, so everyone's super competitive. Everyone wants to win. But, but right. yeah, if I go on my my new cabinet on a game I know I'm not very good at, yeah, yeah, I, I still want to win really bad. But I know I'm not going to. You know, I think I took a uh, one game off of Tonka, and I was really happy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Tonka's it's really all, good at those. It's it's <laughs> so hard though, man. I mean, like again, so again, this goes back to going, you know, pre, you know, pre teen, you know, teen Rod Chan. All I want to do is win. All I care about is winning. I'm the best. I know how to do chain throws with King. You can kiss my ass if you don't know anything else. I will beat you to the no end until you get humbled. And I think that's that's one of the keys, right, is for you to get humbled. Again, and this comes back to, I think, yeah, last last year when I started playing Big Blue. All I'm going to do is going to tick throw people, man. People don't even know how to play this game. Nah, you just do short throw. You should be fine. Wrong. <laughs> wrong yeah, that's my favorite game bro you just activated my my uh my trap card <laughs> exactly it's like oh wait a minute hold on a boom and i'm gonna throw you to death so you know i think there's a balance to it if you want to learn sure but you know there has there's some cockiness to every one of us here especially all the old school heads because you know uh, it's funny you you talk you you mentioned tick throws and you mentioned having that attitude because i remember when i was young I was playing at like a local grocery store where we had the Street Fighter Arcade. And uh, I used to think I was the hottest shit. Okay. I used to walk around being like, oh, yeah, nobody can beat me in this, that. And amongst my friends, I used to think that. And I remember this one guy, and I did not know what tick throws were. I had no idea of, of mm. any of that. And he started doing that. He started jumping in with like a low kick and then a throw and this, that. I'm like, what the hell is this? How come, how come he's throwing me? What What is this cheap garbage? And I just <laughs> got so frustrated. I got so angry. Can, can, can I ask you, do you remember what year that was? Oh, God. I'm, it, it had to be in the 90s. Okay, because back, be the back then, you know, it remember, throws. So if you guys don't know, the people that are watching this that's really, you know, younger, right? You know, I'm in my 40s, I'll admit it. Remember, oh, back there's then, no games, shame in being in no your 40s, in the 80s game, right? So remember, games back then were 50 cents, 50 cents. OK, you don't have, you know, the console version at home to play. All right. So yeah. if you're going to be tick throwing somebody and you're going to lose your 50 cents, you best believe you're going to get pissed off because you're spending money just to get your ass whooped. So there's a lot of pride on the line to be able to to, to learn, right? So when you, you know, when, when Blast is saying, oh, yeah, you know, like, spend 99 seconds to practice fireball, I'm like, damn, dude, were you rich? <laughs> you know, did you have a job? Because, <laughs> like, I don't have a job. I couldn't, you know, back then, like, I was giving, what, $5 to spend on an arcade. Thankfully, you know, yeah, I was good tough. enough to make that last for, like, three hours, right? But... Again, we don't have that console stuff that we had back there or PC or whatever to, to be able to practice. So it's like a lot of trial and error. And yeah, see, thank you, Blood. That's exactly what it is. You know, that's, no throws. So, yeah. And so, you know, and people would get their ass whooped, like for like legit ass whoopings outside the arcade because you take throw. You did jab, 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 throw with guile. I'm telling you, it's not it, you know, it, there's that's why a lot of people have problems, you know, and I'm looking at you, Zeus of War. Uh, you know, is that fucking, you know, is the whole, you know, you're getting tick throw. Oh, all you're doing is tick throwing all day. That's part of the game, dude. Sorry if I'm playing. Sorry I'm playing. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, we're not losing 50 cents here, folks. We're not losing oh, yeah. dollars here. Like, we're just we're just playing time, which I had to learn that the hard way yesterday. I raged really bad against against Knock. You know, shout out to Knock. And I almost broke my control panel for my big blue because I was so pissed. So it's just like you know you gotta take you gotta take those things into account. I don't know, I, but yeah, but to, back to what we're saying. It's just tick throws part of the game. That's all I wanted to mention. I, I'm still here. I just need, need need to block out for a second. But yeah. go ahead, guys. Yeah. Hey man, I guess if, if someone, uh, sorry man, uh, but if someone's blocking, I'm gonna throw you because you're not yeah. taking damage if you block it. Exactly. <laughs> so, why, so why not tick throw? <laughs> yeah. 
I guess it's a good thing. I wasn't part of the fighting game community back then because I throw a lot. Sure. I didn't I didn't tick throw back then, he but I throw a lot. A lot. A lot. And people <laughs> but, but, know me for that. I got people in the chat that will know I'm a throw whore. But I still do. but in his defense, I don't think he does it on purpose. I think uh, no, you do it on purpose. You're it, trying to win, right? <laughs> well, now, now no, it does. No, but I don't think it always does. Like I, I think he actually uh, tries to combo, and it it comes out that way in the versus mm. series. It does, mm. no. it does sometimes. But then no. he learned, he learned. Okay, if I do this, then I can throw them. I'll keep doing that. I think that's what it is with him. I'll no, I am definitely not... one of those people that will just walk up to you and throw. And so many people get caught with that. They're they expecting do. an attack, so they're holding block. Yeah. And I'm just going <laughs> to do it until you learn I'm going to do it. Bam. That's, Big that's time. My, that one's my favorite. When, yep. when Lobo runs all the way across the screen, so you, you. you, you even like, have Why didn't I do anything? No. Blood side says, <laughs> it's a skill the way you do it. You see? <laughs> But yeah, it, see, people it, in the chat know that I throw whore. I, I'm not ashamed of it. So th this brings up a point, right? So, uh, again, getting the fighting games and stuff like that, don't limit yourself to one play style. I know it sounds corny as hell to say it like that, like it's, it's like, a movie. It's like blood sport. Right. Don't you know, limit yourself one never style. Never limit my yeah. style to just yeah. one style yeah. to keep an open mind. Yeah, so, you know, Sadoshi... Sadoshi was right Tanaka, on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sadoshi Tanaka was, was right about that. But I mean, like, don't think that tick throwing is bad. I mean, yeah, it's annoying as hell. But you know what? If you're falling for it, that's your bad. <laughs> like, that's not, you know, well, anybody else's that's, bad. That's the thing. I had to actually learn how to how to get away from that. But the funny thing is, is that I hated the person that did it to me the first time, <laughs> but I ended up becoming friends with him. And because there's a saying, keep your friends closer, but your enemies even closer. That was mm. the thing that I went with. But mm. he turned out to be an all right guy. And he even taught me how to do it. So I started to mix it up in my strategy. It's not something I always do. But the biggest thing is wake up. Like, how do you how do you counter that? Like, to me, personally, if they're coming close and they're within range and I know that they're going to do it or I'm expecting it, a good way would be to do a Shoryuken with Ryu, for example. Um, Shaft, what, what would be your suggestion on how to deal with, like, tick throws? Yeah, so once once you know where the openings are, it, that's, that's when you start to understand wh how you can counter it, right? Let, just like you said, one of the best things you can do is just DP right when you're waking up. Oh, yeah. And catch the first kick. But if that first kick connects... You kind of have to block as many ticks until yep. you think they're gonna they're gonna throw, and so you kind of just have to be ready to to counter throw in that situation. And and once you land a couple counter throws, they're gonna stop trying to tick throw you, and then instead they'll they'll do tick 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 sweep kick because mm -hmm. then you're gonna try and grab them, and then you, they'll successfully sweep kick you. So next time you block, and then it just becomes a 50 50 guessing game of. Are they going to try and tick throw me this time, or are they going to sweep kick me or, or combo me in the corner? Right. So, utility man, with regards to the way you're throwing, and let's say the versus series, what's your approach? I mean, it's not a tick throw, but let's. There are some things you can do to it's trick your works, opponent. Isn't it? I, was, I was doing some tick throws with Zangief. Yeah, you can actually, but you have to. And yeah, it, it's a little. It's it's at a different speed, so you kind of. Yeah, you kind of have to mix up some things and try to be creative with the strategy. I think, in my personal opinion, at least. Like, like, but, does it not chain if if I land a, a weak hit into a SPD? Like, is it is it uh, blockable or? Just give me one one second. I'll be right back. Uh, Tom, you want to take that one? I don't play Zangi. Go ahead and go ahead and talk about that. Give me one second. Okay, so. My trick to throwing really is to string out your attacks in such a way that you're keeping them in block stun till you get right next to them. Like I know because it's the versus series, everyone thinks, oh, you mash the buttons as fast as possible to do the combos. That's not always the case. Sometimes delaying even just a little bit opens up new possibilities. It does. Now, I main Dalzim in a lot of the versus games, which I know 
people here love Dal Zim, right? Right? Yeah. Right. I, so I, know. I find that if you know how long a move keeps them in blocks done, you can space out your chain to where you can get up right next to them the whole time while you're attacking, and they have to block it. And then you can get the throw off immediately. So it's almost like not a tick throw, but kind of from full mm-hmm. screen because it's dials him. You can just kind of do that kind of thing. So for me, the secret to throwing is just know your character well enough. Well, know your character or know your opponent? Or oppo- no. opposing character? No, because if you know your character, you know the block stun is going to be the same no matter who they're playing. True. True. So if you know your character well enough, you know when they can and can't defend against the throw. Like, can, can, I, I, can I ask real quick? Like, I'm curious. Like, what made you pick Dalsum in the versus games? Okay, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Let me go get I my was, pillow. No, no I, I was <laughs> playing X Men vs Street Fighter online, and this is before uh, Blast had really helped me learn how to play. I was just picking characters at random. And, I mean, I'd go through Ryu, Wolverine, Sabretooth, lose, lose, lose. One time I picked Dalzim. And for the match starts, my opponent goes to me, I hate that character. Don't pick mm-hmm. that character. Mm-hmm. That's who I'm maining. And I did. But I do it with love. <laughs> and so, uh, who does he synergize with? Dalzim, I feel like I can run Dalzim with everyone, but my personal pick for it, I pick Dalzim usually with Charlie. Oh, okay. Because they're very different. Mm. Like I know a lot of people think Dalzim is a rush. I mean, a, a zoning type character, but no, I rush down with him in the versus series. Sure. And Charlie is your defensive zoning type character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I like that style contrast because by the time somebody gets used to one character, they have to play an entirely different style against the other one. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. I played right. Rushdown Dalsim on Street Fighter, bro. All day. I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All yeah, day. Remember that Dalsim, bro. First time I saw it in the tournament, I was like, wow, this guy, <laughs> he's warping all over the place. That was down, crazy. Down. That was really crazy. Yeah. So, um, some of the things that I do, like if I'm playing um, Marvel versus Capcom and I have an opponent that just simply likes to turtle, and you get these guys that do, they just, they're runners. And in that game, Mega Man? yeah, Mega Man specifically, I would say, is more of a runner, especially you just running back, high punch, running back, high punch, running back, shoot, high shoot, punch, shoot. orbit. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot. Yeah. But, but a lot of times I'll get somebody who just likes to sit in the corner. And when I know that that opponent is sitting in the corner, so this comes back to what Rod Chan said with regards to do you know your character or do you know your opponent or who you're playing against? So for me, it's a little bit of both. So if I see that my opponent is a turtle and they like to, to sit back, I'll do sit little things like I will throw them periodically mm-hmm. to try and get them to, to get out of that corner and to move around more, if you will. Mm-hmm. So because I, I hate running and chasing after people. Like it gets, it gets annoying after a while. So I'll, I'll drill you into a corner. Yeah. And once you're in that corner, you either have to get out of it or you're going to sit there and you're going to start taking things or whatever I'm throwing at you. Right. So I'll do things where I'm throwing out combos and they're expecting me to do combos, but then I'll come in and I'll do something like a tick throw where I'll come in, I'll just do a low kick, crouching, let's say, and they're they're expecting me to do additional combinations and they're starting to crouch. Mm-hmm. So they're naturally holding back at that point and I'll go in for the throw. Sure. I'll do things like that as an example. Mm-hmm. You know, in the versus series so and that's like with ryu that i'm giving an example of sure. with like zangief and, and things like that i go for different thrusts i don't play zangief that much and i don't play him like you know that well a good person you want to talk to that plays zangief would probably be like morpheus 56k guy is great with zangief um his he's name is morpheus morpheus even oh. though you look at it you're like Morpheus, right? There's no E, so he's actually Morpheus 56K. Dang, so I was going to say we had great uh, name synergy, but Morpheus, got it. Yes. 
So, so I do want to point out real quick, since you're on the topic, I saw Easy Market in the chat earlier. He was. That yeah. guy has an 11 out of 10 defense. You have to throw him. You have yeah. to. I. Mm, he's also good to, to not fall for certain things. So um, it depends on what it is that I'm doing. He actually likes to corner people. So one of the strategies he'll use is – He'll orb with Strider, and he'll use Devilot as an assist. So Devilot, she does an explosion that you can't block. So if you're sitting in a corner and Strider has those orbs on him, you're not getting out of that. So mm -hmm. huge shout-out to Easy Market because that's something he does. And another huge shout-out to Eddie Good, 86, because he does that strategy as well. Um, so top players, good good players out there that, that know how to – do that um but yeah i would say being in a corner is not always a good thing if you're playing against guys like that for example i don't think being in the corner in any fighting game is a good thing no i disagree i actually like the corner if i'm playing against a really good wolverine or even war machine the corner is my friend yeah. because they have the ability. They have the ability to get around you. Okay. When they get around you, they can do an infinite. They can take you for a ride, and you're pretty much that's it. Mm. So when your back is to the wall, your back is protected. You gotcha. have to deal with whatever is coming at you and what that approach is. So with War Machine, they'll just start doing a lot of knee diving and trying to get you to either come out. Right. So that they can pop you up and go into the infinite, or they'll do things to try and you know come down and they're like, all right, well, I see he's blocking up top. Let me try and mix it up a bit and go for his feet. So they'll do things like that. And that's when you as in defense to that, that's when you get to catch him. But you have to sure. have patience. Yeah. A lot of patience in order to gotcha. deal with things like that. So that's just my personal experience talking with that. Gotcha. So, but right. Street Fighter, I agree with you guys. Corner is not always the best thing. Yeah. So, hey, Rod, did you get bodied by Lobo the other day? I think he's uh, taking shots at you in the chat. Is he really now? <laughs> <laughs> You're not out there exposed. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I haven't played Lobo in a while. Last time I played him, he was playing uh, Sagat, and his, mm -hmm. his, uh, his tiger knee throw loops are pretty, are pretty harsh in hyper. So, yeah. um, anyway, uh, I, and unfortunately guys, I mean, this is by no means, uh, no, no, that no, no, no. I don't like you guys. Uh, I do have to bounce out. Um, oh, but, fine. uh, I really do appreciate you guys having me on. Um, Thank you for being on with us. You know, like I said, this, uh, I really appreciate it next time. Just hit me up and we'll do it again. And we'll go from there. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys later. Thank you for right. coming by. So, we are back to the trio so we could start winding down a little bit but uh, i just there's a lot of things that we can jump into it and discuss but the whole point of this was really how to approach these games like how do you really get into it and i think we've covered a good amount of things like the thing that i used to do back in the x team days and my advice always was pick a character stick with that character that one character master that character feel comfortable with that character before you move into your next character or you start learning other things so like when i played way back in the day street fighter 2 that was my first fighting game i played using whatever worked so like i said i was mashing my buttons i was like oh, okay mashing gets me blanca to do electricity so blanca was my first character that i was playing as a main That's so Said it with love. I, I I say it with love, and I mean it. Blanca was my my favorite one, the first one, and that's who I stuck with for a while until I moved into Guile. I don't and know you went into The Shotos and all of that, but it's true. And but, anyway, I I had to learn how to do the rest of the movements, but that was what I stuck with, and that would be my advice moving forward. Like, pick somebody, stick with that character until you're comfortable and you feel like you're doing good with that one character. And then move on to other things bigger and greater. So, Chef, something. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to say I, I agree. And just to add on to that, you know, another anecdote of how I've been applying that to Marvel vs. Capcom. 
Um, oh yeah, please. So when I'm in, like if I'm fighting other players, I, I play a lot of like Ryu and Zangief so I can lean on my Street Fighter mechanics and, okay. and not worry about like trying to do all this new stuff I'm not comfortable with. But then offline, I'm only using one character when I'm labbing and I'm just practicing my, my knock up air combo just over and over and over trying to figure out the timing. And uh, it's, it's a secret who I'm going to use as my main. So you'll find out once I can do those combos. I'm curious to see that. Uh, if you need, <laughs> if, if you ever want to play, like I, I have a lot of IOUs, but if you ever want to play, I will eventually get all my stuff in order and I will come back to play and I will be part of that with everyone. Um, but I'm happy to also help and give advice or things like that. So if there's something I can show or explain, feel free to reach out to me at any time. You know, th this is what it's all about. It's like we're all sharing knowledge. There's other people out there in the chat that have shared their knowledge throughout this, this whole show, uh, which thank you guys for that too, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think sticking with something, perfecting that person, perfecting that craft, making sure that you know you're good with that that's really the approach i would say is the way to go with things and then later on you know you, it's like okay yeah, yeah i can do the combos i can do the movements i can do that the next thing is how do you apply it in battle that's where things like strategies and things like that come into play but also interacting with other people will help you grow so that you know like like i gave my personal experience my story with somebody doing tick throws in street fighter 2 on me and i was like how do i deal with this you know and then later on i became friendly with the person we became friends and he explained it to me and then i started to understand a little bit and my solution was the dp and i still do that as a as a counter for that but everybody's different everybody's got their own thing that works for them and some people are happy to share and some people are are not you know, you'll find different people and don't get discouraged if somebody doesn't want to share things. Yeah. And one other thing we, we haven't talked about a lot because it seems kind of obvious is watch tutorial videos. You yes. know, um, I was a, a little cocky when I started playing online because I was kind of king of the hill in my, my local scene, you know, but, you know, so I, I was like a little too proud to open up a beginner's tutorial video for Street Fighter, you know, but I was like, okay, I'll just watch it. And I learned a bunch of new things. And then I was like, okay, I'll watch the intermediate one. And I learned a ton, you know? And then in the advanced one, I didn't know any of that about uh, negative edge, you know, all these different uh, safe jumps, all these different mechanics that like opened up a completely new world to how you can play the game. I think the problem though, is that, yeah, there are tutorials and things like that. And the internet is, is huge. There's a, so many things out there. So it's like sometimes you're looking for something and it's like, what is it that you're looking for? Yeah. You won't find specifically. Um, and that's something that I've personally felt. And that's why I, I've been wanting to do this for the longest time. And I've, a lot of you guys know that I've been wanting to do like tutorials and things like that. And I'm hoping to get there. I just have had a lot of things going on in life that I just haven't had a chance to do it. But my, my approach is to make tutorials like I've done some videos, a little here or there, but I want to do something where I'll do a video and I'll explain what I'm doing so that the person that's watching will have a better understanding of like, okay, so like I, like Easy Market pointed this out earlier, like I, I showed him how to do the, the corner hurricane kicks in uh, Marvel versus Capcom. So you can link multiple hyper hurricane kicks with Ryu in a corner one after another so if you have three hyper levels you can link all three hypers and you'll get about 55 hits in just hurricane kicks um but i just recorded it gave that video to him and shared it without actually going into detail i just did demonstrations if you will so i'd like to do demonstrations but i'd also like to explain what it is that i'm doing a little bit more in depth so that people who are watching and are trying to learn these games they have a better understanding saying okay i see how he did that but i don't understand it so like if you slow it down explain it to them this way people can understand and be like oh okay so i have to press this button at this time this button at that time i have to wait here for a second because a lot of people don't know that now you can actually figure this out on your own if you're sitting there like 
against a dummy in a training room, so on and so forth, practicing over and over. That's something that you could figure out. That's something that you could eventually get on your own too. And a lot of people did that, do that. And I believe Easy Market did that because that's something he validated and confirmed that he could do now. So I'd love to see that in action, by the way, Easy Market, if you're watching. And I see you out there, so I know you are. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I went first last time. Go ahead. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say I, I've I've done some of that uh, for people privately when they're I've even like recorded my go. hands and then done a slow mo recording so that they can see exactly the timing and what to do. That's that's how you really help people, in my opinion. Like if you show them and explain it to them, it goes a long way. That's things that I even did back in the X team days. I would take the time out in game showing people okay do this do this do that you know and it's i know why you do it uh, well at least i have a idea of why you do it this because you want to help somebody somebody's yeah. trying to figure out how to play the game it's like you want to help that person so that they can get involved and play it so that we have more people that are engaged and that play these games and we all grow as a community that way that's exactly it the rising tide lifts all ships oh yeah oh yeah so I'm just going to say again, I'm not your target player for that. I will certainly show up to support, but I don't watch <laughs> tutorials. I don't watch pros play. I don't look at guides. Mm. I literally just go in the game and play. He just goes uh, with the flow. Yeah, like this, uh, just a few days ago, we had a World Heroes Perfect tournament. Never played the game before. I literally, I go in training mode. I try out a bunch of the characters. I have a move list. I pick one character who I like the moves of, and then I just start playing right away. And, I mean, it's probably because of my fighting game background that I adapt to things really quickly. But I still think I did pretty well. Like, I've been playing Welcome to Die. I played HDR Champ, the other guys. I'm doing really well in the game. Like, I'm probably by no means a pro. Like, probably not even close. But until I see what I'm doing not work, I'm just going to stick with it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. If you know something's not working, you want to try and figure out what does and what doesn't. And that's the whole lo losing equal learning thing. You know, don't, okay, be, hold on. don't be afraid to lose. Okay, I, I see Blood Tide mention throws. So I did actually want to point this out since we were talking about tick throws. World well, Heroes okay, Perfect is really strange in that aspect. If you were on the defensive, your throw has priority in that game. Okay. It is really, really hard to tick throw. If they block an attack from you, they can throw you before you can throw them. And I've never seen another fighting game do that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm an anomaly when it comes to tick throws. I, I know that I'm a big supporter, but part of the reason is my crew growing up, like I said earlier, we didn't know about care canceling or animation canceling. And so like if your opponent is dizzy, our biggest punish is going to be a, a dragon punch, right? Like because we didn't know about big combos or a better punish that we could do is a cross up medium kick and then a bunch of weak kicks and then a into a tick throw right and so tick throws were just like one of the most damaging punishing things that we knew how to do so we we did it a lot and yeah. we relied on dragon punches to to counter them so that was that's just in my dna man i i tick throw sorry guys <laughs> no i i'll never forget that first day when when it happened to me in the local arcade like what rachan was saying you came in with five bucks and if you were that kid that this guy did you know all these tick throws on you and you wasted your five bucks Man, I was pissed. That's all that, I gotta that's, say. <laughs> that, that's probably another aspect of why I'm geared that way. Is I was I was a little too young to really compete in the arcade scene. Like I'm I'm you know I'm in my 30s, so I was only six when the arcade scene was happening. Um, so I, so I you were like mashing those buttons like me then, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was a button masher at that time, so um, it wasn't. Yeah, I was playing on the console at home with my friends. So not beating each other up over tick throws is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you on that. I do want to, uh, since we are kind of winding things down a little bit, I think I'd like to, if anybody has any questions, please feel free. So I see some questions out there. I'm going to highlight some of them. So what exactly is a pro in the fighting game community? In sports, it usually means you get paid. 
Hmm. So I, I know that they do have a whole esports thing, um, and some pro players in the fighting game community do actually get sponsored. So sponsorships are like, uh, for example, like Red Bull, I know did like a sponsorship at one point. And there's other, uh, there's other uh, vendors and there's other sp- sponsorships that are out there that people will pay for you to advertise their product or their thing. Um, and I think like Justin Wong, for example, he's obviously considered as a pro out there, but I think he actually gets paid for some of these things. I mean, come on, like he's even with Arcade One Up, like Arcade One Up pays the, pays the man he's involved because he's got the name, people know of him. And that's, I think a pro player or somebody that got into the game, got better, so and so forth, grew, got known in the community, people know of them, their name you know, has weight to it. And as a result, you'll get people that wants, you know, like sponsors, things like that will come by. I mean, would you, is there anything that utility man or shaft you guys want to add on to that? Or are you, what do you guys I mean, think? you have an official definition of pro, which is kind of what you gave, but there are a lot of people that I would consider pro at games that can't actually be part of big competitions and whatnot, just because, they don't have any kind of backing from some kind of company or whatnot. You can still be a pro. Yes, again, yeah. definition-wise, a pro is somebody who has the backing. But I guess I look at it as somebody that's a pro is just somebody that's really good at that particular game. I mean, it's like, you know, I am professional. But you don't see me making money, you know. No, but uh, I yeah. agree with that. I, I agree. Pro in my mind means you don't really have to work a regular job and you can monetize what you're doing to pay all your bills. To me, that's what a pro is. That's so, a, to so, me, so that's whether like that's a, a, whether that's just a hot chick that streams and, and she isn't like a pro <laughs> level, but she gets her mortgage paid by streaming. She's yeah, a one pro of in those mind. streamers. I, so in my like, mind, not it's throwing like shade. Monetization. They do their job well. So I'm not throwing any shade at so, so the real answer is is that it depends on perspective, if yeah. you will. That's the I, I, real answer. My perspective is just mon- if they're able to monetize it. Okay, I mean, I could see that with like like Justin, for example, he yeah. would be one. And, and that ties into having sponsors or being on an esports team. Like that's that's all part of that too. But but I can also say there are other pro, um, pro players. I can agree with Tom on on some of that too, where I could say. Uh, there are some pro players, like even within our own community, let's say the, the Mall versus Capcom community, there are big names, people that are well known for the game that are in the community that we would consider, let's say, as pros. So there's different levels of, de- of perception as well. So it's like within the community, we have our own pros identified. Now, it doesn't mean that they're like, because one thing that I've always learned is that no matter how good you can get at something, someone else can come along and become even better than you. So it is important to always be humble about that because you can't go on and think that you're like number one. And that's the thing that we talked about earlier with like people coming in with this mentality of them being the king of the hill. You know, it comes back to all of that too. And then they're finding out, oh man, maybe I wasn't that good. Maybe, uh, yeah, this guy knows something else. But you know what? They're cheating or they're hacking or whatever. They'll use excuses too. But if you sit down there and you actually talk to people, like like I was a kid back in the day with the tick throws, I felt like they were cheating. I felt like they were whatever. Turns out it was actually a thing in the game. It was a strategy. So you know, but that's, that's a discussion for another day. Okay. Well, I just want to throw this out real quick. If – what your opponent is doing comes across as cheating to you. Pick their character, try it for yourself, see how people counter it. Then you'll know what to do. So since we're we're picking questions, I'm picking more questions. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff asked a good question for you, utility man. <laughs> I mean, you got your three eights, your one eight. Your three quarters, your socket. Good answer. Good answer. (laughs) Uh, Good answer. 
Let's see what other questions are out there. Apparently Sosa didn't like my hot take on female streamers. <laughs> no? <laughs> Wait, where is that? I'm like scrolling through the comment. Oh, here we go. <laughs> they can be. It's just the type of pro that they are. Hey, man, they're don't, definitely, be, don't be jealous just because she can pay her mortgage by, by playing video games and you can't. <laughs> There are some serious ones out there. We've seen a lot of them. We know. Yeah, see, even uh, Easy Market brought up what, like, what I was talking about. These guys are pros when it comes to, like, Marvel versus Capcom. You know, within our own community, as an example. You know, like uh, Eddie Good, Just Rich, Silent Ninja. These guys are pros. Uh, Anz is another good one. Uh there's a lot of guys out there who I would say are at that pro level in more versus Capcom. Uh, well, the, the definition that Shaft gave isn't wrong. He's just no, going no, by, no. Yeah, he's just just going by the official definition of a pro, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I meant by this. It depends on the perception. And I yeah. guess what is the, the question with that? At what level? So in my eyes, I agree with him too. Like you've got like Justin Wong, who has sponsors, who has things that he's like he's monetized, things that we talked about where he's making money off of this. So that would be, you know, at that level, you know, obviously he's a pro, but he's well known at that level. That's like a in my eyes, like a godlike level, if you will, of pro. You know, yes. and I can take another angle too. Um, you know, obviously I'm being a little facetious here, but that's okay. Um, you know, let's look back when uh, the Evo scene was really big for Street Fighter 2 and there was guys like Afro Legends who were consistently, you know, placing top top three. Um, those guys were pro level. There just wasn't a pro scene, really. Like there wasn't, Evo was the only real big thing where players could make a decent chunk of money, but there wasn't like a, a Korean StarCraft league in South Korea where these kids literally live in the team house and get paid a salary and that's all they do. And that's how they get paid. Like there just wasn't ever a scene like that here for fighting games that there is for like League of legends. Right. So we just never really developed that for the fight for street fighter, or I don't know about other fighting games, but I feel like that's why the, the term pro is kind of murky because we just never really built that pro scene. Yeah. I, I, and Chan brought up a good point. He says the term pro and amateur isn't loosely thrown around in, in sports, even in esports. It's, it's a big thing now. He's right. Yeah. I, I agree with that too. Um, I think I yeah, saw. I don't, I don't even call myself a pro. Some people might think that I am, but I don't call myself that. <laughs> all, all these guys making Harry Potter references. You, you, you guys are not very original, okay? Been that I wasn't. Hi I too. saw them. I wasn't highlighting that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not an original thought. All right. You're you you could you could pull off the look. I mean, Halloween just passed, but <laughs> dude, I, I used I used to have circle glasses and like hair like this, and yeah. I had that before Harry Potter came out. And so that year for Halloween, I just put on a cape. Everyone's like, "You're Harry Potter." I was like, "No shit." <laughs> okay. Hey, now that they mention it, you do kind of resemble. Maybe you should have worn the hat. I, I think I used to more. Now, not not as much. See, I'm happy Bloodside brought this up. I've actually seen the shows where, like he said, today's Street Fighter scene is exactly like that. There are a ton of pro players that live together to improve themselves. I, I have seen um, some some YouTube stuff where I've seen a lot of these pro players actually together and all of that. And I think he's absolutely correct. I think that they actually do the things that, that we discuss that we do within our own community, where it's like you, you come together and you start explaining different things and you talk with one another and you share the, that wealth of knowledge of whatever you found out within the game, you know? And I, yeah. and I think that's a beautiful thing. Is that for street fighter five? I'm curious. Cause if so, that's freaking awesome that they're doing that. I wish I, that, that happened for street fighter two. I think I saw that for Street Fighter V before, um, but I, knowing Bloodtide, he keeps up with the latest trends. I'm thinking he's referring to Street Fighter Six, but he'll clarify if he's still watching. Hey, um, Roderick Griffin is asking us to post the, the groups. Um, are, are we okay, like, in the description after the stream's over? Can we post 
the, the different Discord groups, Facebook groups to go join, maybe even sure. links, links to yeah. tutorial videos. Uh, you guys can post them now, or if you can't, put it in the private chat, and I'll post it so it goes out from Fighters Evolution to all those things. Um, where there are different um, Discords. The most popular Discord is the online Discord, so huge shout-out to Footy Laughs. Footy Laughs did that for the home arcade. Um, so it's actually referred to as the online arcade. So his vision was for the people who are playing the, the games on the arcade one-ups that they had a place so that they can come together and talk. And that thing blew up. That thing grew. So huge shout out to Footy. I think majority of us really discuss things there and talk there. Um, so if anything, I would say that would be a definite server to join for the Discord. Um, Facebook groups, there's so many of them out there. Um, Footy also had created the um, X-Men versus Street Fighter one, but it's a generic group for all kinds of fighting game discussions. I had picked up one myself, um, and we have, I think, close to 2,000 people now, or 1,800 or 1,900 people in in, a, in another one called Fighting Games and More. Um, so I'll post some links uh, within uh, the Fighters Evolution Discord as well, so you guys can follow up and things like that but please guys feel free to share so that everybody knows where to go where to find things because all this stuff is scattered and the the thing is a lot of people have self-interest so it's like like everybody has their own thing that they're going to want to hold on to and be like no 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 come here check this out but for people that are starting out and trying to learn things or even grow it's like where do you go what do you do you know so you start joining other servers, you start joining other things, and that's where you'll find where you truly belong or where you really want to be, you know? So. Okay, I'd like to address Sosa's question there because I think that's a good one. Let me see, what did he say? Can you be a pro if you play the game using easy mode or simple mode? Oh, boy. I, I, have, to, I have to say, okay, you, you want to go first or should I? Because I, I, there's something no. I have to about that. I'm going to give my hot button opinion here. I hate easy mode. I hate simple mode. I hate the fact that they're even in fighting games. I don't want to play anybody that uses them. That being the case, you can, at least in my opinion, be a pro as long as you're not reliant on those. If you have to use those to win, I don't consider you a pro. Not so... <laughs> Um, I, my personal take is if you're playing the game, you should learn how to do things the right way without easy mode. That comes back to perfecting your craft. So like you can sit there and just press a certain button and they'll do a fireball or whatever. You know, that's like you basically having a macro or, or an yes. easy way out, yes. which is what utility man is bringing up with regards to that in and I could see that happening. Now, I have seen players like, oh, my God, I forgot the guy's name, but he's in Marvel versus Capcom on the on the arcade scene. And this guy, he plays easy mode, and I was shocked. Are you talking about he, the 90, 90s kids guy? Uh, I don't know what he calls himself he's, now. Or, he's a gold rank that uses e the easy mode? There's a Yeah, there's a high-level skill player that uses easy mode, and he's really good. I'll admit to it. Like it's mm. unexpected. The things if he pulled the, off. I mean, if it's the guy I'm thinking of, and I mean no disrespect to him at all, because obviously he has to play well to get to gold. Yeah. But I'd like to see him play without the easy mode. Show me what you can actually do. See, that's that's where my perspective on that is, is that you should actually learn how to perform certain movements and things like that and not look for an easy way out. Uh, I get that where you want to try and, and, you know, just enjoy the game, if you will. And, and that may be okay for like a beginner, for example. But at one point or another, once you really, if you really want to start taking things seriously so that you can have a mastery of the game, take that approach. Pick one character, stick with them, learn how to do things with that character, and then move on and start learning other things. That would be what my advice would be, personally. I well, I mean, one of my main problems with easy mode 
is the auto combos. I hate auto combos. Absolutely detest auto they, combos. They and I'm not started saying... doing that with the newer games. Yes. Great. And that's I, why I'm, I'm, not that. I'm not saying if you're a new player and you just want to have some fun with your buddies, go right ahead and use it. But if you're coming online, I don't want to play you if you're doing that. And it's not whether you have an advantage or a disadvantage. I want to play people of similar skill levels. I picked up the King of Fighters game, like the last one. And there's one button that you press, and they literally start doing the combo. And I'm like, that takes the fun out of it for somebody like yes. me, for example. Yes. Now, I get, I, I get that. So I have friends that will play fighting games, but they're not good at it. And they for the most part won't play me but if they can do something like that just because they can enjoy the game and pull that off the all power to them but my personal take like i said earlier pick something master it and stick with that i'm not into this whole them making it easier for newcomers by giving you one button press and it does all kinds of things for you i i don't agree with that yeah, I don't know. If Jeff, yeah, I was going to ask uh, you, what's, what's your take on this? I, I don't know if I'll buy Street Fighter Six because of the the one button combos or specials or whatever. Um, although that being said, on the um, the new anniversary edition that they released on PlayStation and all the other platforms uh, for Street Fighter, it has an option that's to enable that. But you don't when you're queuing up to play people, you can like only queue versus people that that have that disabled, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. if it's optional and I don't have to play with people that are using it, I, fine. But mm -hmm. like, just play with a game genius. That's stupid. Yeah, that's that's kind of what my take on this is too. So, and but that's really my thing. Like, you're free to use it if you want, but I don't want to play you if you're using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody confirmed that the one button doesn't work online for like Street Fighter Six, for example. Oh, okay, that's, that's good. good to know. So, yeah. like, I know that that's how it should be. Like, if you're playing locally with friends or something like that, that makes sense. But if if you've got, like, ranked games and things like that that are in the mix, oh, God, you should not have something like that. I totally agree. Like, I don't think that that should be something that they should they should have in those instances. So. Um, Arcadio admitting he's got the Game Genie hooked up. That's why we all lose to him. You oh, know what? Does. He's he got, you know what it is? He's probably got that, that game genie set up so that he has a three to four frame advantage because mm. <laughs> that's probably what it takes for, to get those throws in. <laughs> no, right. he, he's got he the, one, the one button SPD. He just programmed it. He has full screen SPDs. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So, but, um, uh, we are winding down, so like we're already over an hour and a half of the show at this point. Um, there will be other topics and other things that we're going to bring up. Today, we, we were really just looking to discuss how to actually approach fighting games, how to get into them, like what your approach is. You know, we, we had everybody that was on the stream today basically say what their approach is, what their thoughts were, you know. In closing, my whole thing, like I keep saying it verbatim, is like over and over and over is that you pick one guy, you stick with that guy, you practice those those things that the guy can do in the game. Or or gal. It doesn't have to be a guy. It could be a woman, Chun-Li, you know, whatever. And it doesn't have to be a Street Fighter, even though there was a lot of references to Street Fighter today. It could be Mortal Kombat. It could be Tekken. It could be whatever fighting game that you're into. Now, one thing that I, I wanted to actually say that I just came to mind is like you're going from one game to another, and these were some good questions that were asked earlier, was how do you go from one game to another? So like to me personally, if I'm going from, let's say I'm playing Marvel and I'm more of a Marvel guy, and yeah, I can play Street Fighter and all of that. To me, the fundamentals that you learn in one game, you can then carry over into another thing, into another game. So it's like whatever you learn as, let's say, the quarter circle forward motion, and, and that's like the fireball, you can take that and apply that to, let's say, Mortal Kombat. You know, 
Ryu does the Hadouken in Street Fighter. I'm playing Mortal Kombat. I'm playing a Sub Zero. He throws the same thing, like a fireball, an ice fireball to freeze your opponent, as an example. So whenever I actually start off playing any new fighting game, I'm always, like, to me, it's a universal set of movements that I'm always trying. And that would be my advice from when you're jumping from one game to another, that you should try this out, you should try that out, so on and so forth. So, um, Shaft, what is... Uh, your take on that like yeah no i totally agree i think um there's too many especially on a game like uh the marvel vs. capcom 2 there's so many characters like it's <laughs> it's gonna take forever like i've i've played street fighter 2 for 30 years oh, and so i'm still learning new things with different characters you that's know? the beautiful so, thing about these games exactly so i think it's if you want to get good it's imperative to stick with one character so that you can max it out and that's not to say you know when you're fighting online and you've lost five in a row picking your main character over and over sure mess around pick some other characters right but when you're labbing offline like you should really be focusing on specific things like when you're in there fighting somebody and you notice you're missing your 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 dp your dragon punch on wake up or you're dropping your combos in the middle of the combo, you know, focus on those things when you're offline. You know, I, th I think it's good to be targeted about what you're practicing and what you what you need to improve. Like, do I want to, and, and then if there is a training mode, uh, like I have a PlayStation with the anniversary edition, they have an amazing training mode it's where, a good you, one. where yeah. you can actually program the second player to, to like tick throw you over and over and then practice trying to get out of those tick throws. I spend a lot of time in training mode. That's really awesome. That, that's some good tips, actually. If you can actually pre-program your dummy to do things, and they have this in the, especially like the newer games, they started to do those type of things. Oh man, that's a that's a really nifty and useful tool. Like it's it's easier if you're practicing with somebody. Like you know, let's say Shaft comes up to me, he's like, "Hey, Blast, can you you play?" MVC with me. I'm trying to practice this, and how do I avoid this or do this? Like he was giving the example with the tick throws. You know, it's easy when you have another person and they can kind of help you. But in such such uh, such situations, you end up having, you know, you're playing by yourself and you're practicing, and you still want to master that craft. That's a great tool. That's a great suggestion that he gave. Like you, if you could do that, that's something you should definitely. Yeah, if, if you're a player who has the arcade one-ups um, and you're serious about it, I would highly recommend if you have a PlayStation, you know, talking about Street Fighter, go buy the Anniversary Edition. It's worth 30 bucks if you're if you're going to utilize the lab like I do. It, it's totally worth 30 bucks for me, even if you don't play online. I wish the, the arcades did have such things, but I think for a th authentic... Oh, I can't even say it. My mouth is so dry. I'm sorry, guys. But... You get it for because they're trying to stay authentic to the original arcades. I think that's why Arcade One Up does not do things like that. You know, they 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 don't actually update their their software or code to do these things. It's nice features, it's nice things, and it would be awesome at a community level for all of us to have those features. Like, how cool would it be to have ranked matches and casual matches and all this stuff? But that would be a whole other show that we can talk about just about these type of things. Yeah. And there's some people, there's some people that I'd want to bring on just for those type of discussions too, that have experience with how to actually modify the code and what's possible mm -hmm. with the code. And if you keep listening to what I'm saying, I keep mentioning the code because I believe the code always wins. So that's all I want to leave it at that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's all kinds of different things that you can do. Um, utility man, anything you wanna you wanna say? I'm gonna leave it off with this: two things. Okay. Do not be afraid of losing. You will lose. Coming <laughs> into this, you will lose. Nobody is unbeatable. Nobody is perfect at these, and we all started from the same place. Don't yeah. be afraid of losing. Oh, yeah. Second, do not be afraid of experimenting with what your character can do. You never know when a crouching middle punch might be a really good attack. 
<laughs> really, the balls. No, like, really, normals are very important. I know a lot of people love the flashy super combos and whatnot. Normals are extremely important. I don't care if it's Street Fighter or Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah, you, if you keep things basic, you'll find that that usually works best. Um, I mean, it depends on, of course, you know, who your opponent is and other things. Sometimes you, it depends if you're playing against a really, really high level skilled player and your your knowledge you know versus them it's like what do you do well to be honest with you try to learn as much as you can try to deal with the situation as best as you can and from that you'll actually learn and you'll grow too so playing players that are beating up on you and they're they're really a lot more skilled than you in a game you have to start understanding like what it is that you have to do to to win eventually and that's how you'll actually start learning and how do you deal with, with strategies and how do you deal with, you know, if somebody's just doing infinites all day on you, for example, like the whole goal of that is not to get caught at all. You want to try and avoid getting caught. So you start coming up with different strategies and playing with, say, more keep away, using characters to, to keep your opponent away or whatever in that case, you know, or... You want to be on top of them to prevent them from coming at you, for example. There's different strategies and different things that we can talk about later on uh, as as we have more of these fight talks. Yeah, you never know when something as simple as a jab is going to throw off your opponent. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, f I feel like a lot of the stuff we talked about today could be their own topic of discussion. Like we could do yeah. a whole show about tick throws or about oh, normals yeah. or, you know. And we can even provide demonstrations and things like right, that. With, with video clips. Some, yeah, we can upload yeah. some video clips and we can display them. And, and I think people that are watching would appreciate that. And I think that's something I'd like to, to do moving forward. Um, I may actually still end up doing that whole World War of uh, World War, the Way of the Warrior show that I originally started way back. Oh, um, you're going to create Street Fighter 2? I think it's already been done. No, not. <laughs> Poor choice of words with the World Warrior. I meant Way of the Warrior, which is, which would be little like little videos, if you will, of how to do this and how to do that and how to do this. But I'd like to have them created, but I'd like to talk about them possibly on this show, so the two come together hand in hand. So that's something that I'd like to talk to you guys more behind the scenes, so that we can maybe develop moving forward. I think we'll have fun with that. Shout out to Last Blade 2. That's a fun game. That is a fun game. Man, I loved it when the guy in the trailer opens up the sword and the light comes out. That's cool. Okay. Like in the intro. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going to definitely get copyright striked, Jeff. <laughs> That's what it is. And see, even you tried, brought up some pretty good things. He said, Morpheus 56K used to beat me 20 to 0 when I started. Now I can keep up with the top dogs. So yeah. shout out. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, th I think that's similar to a lot of people that joined Big Blue. You know, um, Noxu Cal will tell you when he first started, he would he would get whooped up by people who, who now they can't be him. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wolfman also brought up a good thing. He says, all fighting games have something in common. Their core gameplay mechanic is a sequence of button moves that you create. You are the artist and fixer. That's a very good take on that. It's true. You are the one that's drawing those combos out. You're the one that's that's playing that that character, and you're the one that's making it happen. So yeah, I don't it's like there, agree with that. Yeah, and it's like there are, there are a preset number of things you can do. It's not infinite, but it's like a piano or, or like music. There's only so many notes to hit, but you can do a lot with it. Yeah. I want to answer this real quick. The secret KI news, I will tell you. They're doing something never before done before. They are going back and removing Cinder from the original KI because he was just too broken. Whoa. What? Okay. Where is this coming from? Is this this it's whole a joke? Thing? Is it's this a this joke. whole is it's this this joke. whole thing with regards to the whole arcade one up thing with, it's with a joke. Killer instinct? Yes. Well, I know it's a joke. You always talk like this, <laughs> but I'm I'm just 
looking at the sense of origin. That's what I was trying to figure out. Okay. Yes, Sender. Come on. Anybody who played the original KI to any extent knows is Sender it, was massively is it broken. Sender or is it Cinder? Cinder, it's like fire, because he's a go. fire character. There you go. Yeah. I just want to. He was wanna... so cheap. Come on now. Okay. So that that's a whole discussion for for later on because we can talk about like infinities and cheap characters and all that. So maybe that would be a good thing to talk about for the next show. Something yes. with regards to how do you deal with infinites? How do you deal with cheap characters? Or what do you do with things like that? I mean, just food for thought. Like you know. Oh, he was so broken. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, I, I like the character. Well, you already too. have Come you on. already have somebody out there that that is is pointing things out, saying no, he was just noob friendly. He was no. Friendly. Look up a tier list. Come on. Wow. Also, I have to say, let's. Hey, I don't. I don't hate Cinder. That's not the same thing. I have no hate for Cinder. I'm just saying he's cheap. Well, he did look like the Human Torch. I have to agree. I think they they copied the idea and they got the idea from from Human. Torch. If you know he looked like the Human Torch, why are you asking me how to say his name? You know what a sender is. I do. I'm just. I want to like, clarify. This is not, said, this is not you some said UPS cinder. worker here. You 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 said cinder before. I just you know, throwing it out there. Yes, he he's a cinder block. He just sits there. He can't be KO'd, but he can't win either. See, Blood Tide says that he loved playing that game, and I loved seeing people playing it because I just knew that's what it was going to be, an easy clap. See, even Jeff said Cinder Block. Right. Because people don't know. You know, I'll be honest with you. I never really got that into KI. Things like, like KI, to me, like I think what really turned me off with regards to those type of design games, if you will, was the appearance of them. And what really got to me, and you guys will probably know, when I say it, was a game called Clay Fighter. And I always reference Clay Fighter as probably like one of the games that I hated. Hate Clay Fighter. Same. Hate Clay Fighter. I couldn't stand it. Shaft? I it's so bad. It's so bad, man. <laughs> uh, that, I believe the reason I played that game is because it was on a top 10 worst games list. And I, I, I played every single one, and that was one of them. <laughs> I, somebody got it to me as a, as a birthday gift, I think. And I had it on the SNES. Oh, God. It was <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Well, there's there's no reuse in that game. You, of course, you look, like. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I can't believe this. Blood Tide out there. Clay Fire was fantastic. You know what, bro? You take it and you enjoy it. You play that by yourself in a corner, okay? Well, you enjoy that game. Sometimes Jack people Blue. love something because it's bad. That's the case with Clay. Fire. Yeah, that's why I liked it. That's the whole point. That's I, why I, I went and played that whole. Yeah, I hated Clay Fire too. I never thought that that was a, a good game, and that's another. See, we can have another show just about what about kind Shaq of game Fu? were good or or bad or you know. Sure, let's have a show about Shaq Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's yeah, there's there's like. Anyways, uh, tonight was really about how to get into these fighting games and stuff. Uh, but I think we're we're starting to derail and and deep dive into <laughs> other things at this point, <laughs> with the conversation going all over. Um, I mean, I think uh, we covered all the points of how to get I, into fighting games. I think we did. I think we did. I'd like to cl close it down now. Um, but before I do, I'm gonna go around. So, Shaft, is there anything that you wanna uh, talk about, point out, or anything that you wanna say in closing to this dis discussion, this topic? No, I, I think I said everything I had to say. Um, just thanks again for having me on the show. It's been fun. And Pleasure. I guess fi final thought would just be make friends and have fun. And yes. if you're competitive and want to get better, you will just by making friends and having fun. That's a really good suggestion. Utility man? My final thought is that we already did this. I don't want to say the same thing again. <laughs> okay. In that case... If you said what you had to say, we'll leave it at that. It doesn't have to be that. It can be whatever final thing you want to say tonight. So what's the next topic, Blast? 
Ha 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 ha. We have things to choose from. It'll be a big surprise. And I'll leave it at that. But if you, guys, you don't know either. But if you guys want something specifically, let us know. I mean, a lot of you guys are within our Discord, or even if you're shooting it out in other Discord, let us know. You know, whatever feedback we appreciate. So yeah, whatever throw, we throw. do to, to help the community as well, to help you guys, or just for even for entertainment purposes, let us know. If we want to have a discussion about what are the worst fighting games, we'll have a discussion about what are the worst fighting games. That'll be a lot of fun. I want to hear from the audience on that one too. Yeah, throw it in the chat. Yeah, let I us know. Let say, us know. Nobody what? suggest a Ryu episode because that'll just be blast. You won't even invite the rest of us. Oh, God. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, he, that was your first character that you yes, actually was. started off with. Yes, So for was. you to even talk like that, I don't know. And then I don't play 200 different Ryus across 200 different games. Well, I'm pretty sure Shaft is using Ryu in, in Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah. See? Well, because he's doing basically what I did. I used Ryu in MVC because that's who I knew. But I moved on to other characters. And here we go with starting a whole show just about Ryu. <laughs> Ryu. <laughs> Prove my point. <laughs> but Ryu is all you know. <sighs> no, it's not. Yes, Ryu and Red Ryu and Edgy Ryu and Patriotic Ryu and Boobs Ryu and Spider Ryu. I can keep going. <laughs> Spider Ryu. Okay, what about Strider? What about what about Wolverine? You don't play Wolverine. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Do I have to? Do I have to play with Wolverine? Do I have to show you? Don't you play Wolverine? Wolverine. Oh, good lord! You don't want me to use Wolverine, do you? Mm -hmm. you? Really don't. You don't. Bust out your little macro infinite, but you don't play Wolverine. I, I don't have to do a macro. I can actually bust out the infinites and do all the infinites. Mm. Yeah, see, there. Uh, <laughs> once I said that. it, claws Ryu. That's that would be <laughs> Wolverine. Yeah, but. Into. But he only has the Shoryuken motion. He doesn't have anything else. He has... No, he has the fireball motion, too. He, but it does a different... But he move. doesn't throw a fireball. He doesn't throw a fireball, but if you do the motion, he does Berserker Barrage. But that's not a fireball. It's not. But the movements are... Is coming back to what I was saying before with regards to figuring out all kinds of different movements, you want to do... You know, like the universal, if you will, quarter circle forward, quarter circle backwards, you know, the DP that, motions. I take that from every single I try that in every single fight again. That's that just doesn't make take. somebody a Ryu. No, that's just you talking, you and you being you. <laughs> Which I'll leave for another night and I'll leave it at that. So guys, uh thank you so much. Uh let me close this out i'm going to bring you guys back and close out tonight so shaft thank you very much for joining us please hang out back don't don't leave yet utility man please hang out back don't don't out leave back? just yet steakhouse right. out back steakhouse i'm hungry yeah. you're going to the steakhouse all right no no you said to hang out out back well hang out, out, back. out back i'll see if i can get you a steak you stay still <laughs> you stay still <laughs> you stay there i'll be right back <laughs> and with that guys thank you all for tuning in tonight um i'd like to have more of these type of discussions let us know you know what kind of discussions you guys would, would want us to talk about what what topics what things we can bring up that will help you grow in the community that will help you with your game whatever it is let us know you know we'll we'll try to do what we can but I wish you all a good night. Take care. Have a good one.